Welcome to Cloud and Clear, the podcast by SADA for innovative business leaders and technology enthusiasts, where we explore how Google Cloud is transforming the industry and what that means to you. Now, here's your host, Tony Safoyan. A super exciting day here at SADA Systems on Cloud and Clear. It's my first ever game company, and it's the first time I have two guests at the same time. So welcome to Cloud and Clear, Fungi, an amazing gaming publisher and creator of games. And I have uh, both the founder here, Alfred Fung, CEO and founder, and employee number one and head of product extraordinaire, Jimmy Shu. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having us, yeah. Tony. Great to be here. Great to be here. Thanks for coming to our office. This is great. It's beautiful too. Yeah, too. Like LA, you've got this killer view. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. This is the hot seat, by the way. All right. All right. Good. We'll have to switch <laughs> spots then at some point. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no, this is good. We have to, uh, I, I like having both of you guys on. Um, you were just telling me, Alfred, it's funny, you know, you, you like to study people before you meet them, and I do as well. Apparently, we're both philosophy majors from UC schools, even though you went to a better school. Um, My brother went to UC Irvine. It's a, it's a great school. Come on. Philosophy majors in tech. That's like a thing now. Is it really? Apparently. Who else? I, I, I don't know, me and you. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, we're making it a thing. It's good sample the size. The liberal arts are, are very important. <laughs> Jimmy and is also a, liberal arts yeah, as well. I'm a psychology major. Really? Yeah. Also from UCLA. From UCLA, Amazing. yes. Amazing. Psych psychology, philosophy, what's going on? And then uh, we both went to Marshall for, um, for, for different types of graduate degrees. So there you go. Yeah. Almost at the same time frame. Yeah. So small world indeed. Well, it's, uh, it's very nice to, to have you and meet you in person. And... Um, First, I'd like to talk about uh, you guys as individuals. I think, you know, you as a founder, uh, Alfred, how you think about uh, what you're doing and how it is to start a business, a game company. It's a very competitive space. And then, of course, employee number one. Uh, he's in the running for Forbes uh, 30 under 30 in gaming in that category, which is super exciting. I wish you well. Hope you win. Thank you. Um, and, and I think that's, the you know, it's important when you're still relatively, I think at any age as a company, but you guys are in the first sort of five, six years, I think it's important to uh, use kind of the the air cover, the press and the media to get recognized for the great work you're doing. So I encourage, we apply for all sorts of things. So I think that's part of our validation as well. So I wish you luck in that. Uh, but let's talk about Alfred the Man. How did you get here? How did you, how'd you get from philosophy to launching a uh, fungi. Oh, that's a pretty long story. So I'll, I'll keep it short. So I, I graduated UCLA same years, you know, as you in 01. Pretty tough year to graduate if you think about like the overall context, right? Like historically. Um, but I had my mind set on joining the Peace Corps. So I actually lived abroad for many years before moving back. And um, when I moved back, I ended up going to USC to get my, my MBA. And I graduated in 09. Also a tough year to also graduate, tough year, you know, yeah. but if you think about the context of 09, um, you know, the app store came out in 09. And so um, my first job out of uh, business school um, was doing uh, basically revenue assurance and branding and um, basically what people in our industry call monetization in, in games. Um, and then I also did the user acquisition side of things. So I've always been kind of more in the marketing side, you know, even as a Peace Corps volunteer. But that's an art and a science. It's totally an art and science, yeah, which we love. You know, like I think we embrace the fact that um, not only do we have to have the aesthetic eye for the art side, but that we're incredibly analytical by just breaking, breaking apart the data and um, trying to understand um, how to drive the best users into our games and you know and, and Jimmy being the head of our product at Fungi um, you know he oversees a product team which means game designers product analysts and so we're always diving into the data um, as a as a game company because a game itself what happens in the game drives behavior right in terms of uh, more sort of player acquisition and all sorts of other things. It does, yeah. So it, it's funny that, I mean, it's a good segue into kind of like my own history was that I actually specialized um, in information sciences at USC. So I, you know, I was studying big data before big data was even a word. Um, and so um, it, you think about where, you know, mobile was in 09, 2010, it's essentially internet 2.0 at that point. And so all of the learnings from internet 1.0 and the gathering of huge data warehouses, like mobile got the benefit of all of that and so um i was also a beneficiary of that that i came into a role that i can actually help 
a company by analyzing their data, breaking it apart, you know, slicing and dicing it so that we can better understand our users. So long story short, I did that for a, um, a, a few years before getting poached by a small ad agency, I guess a pretty big ad agency uh, now called MNC Saatchi. And so, um, kind of rode the two sides of the fence, you know, the side of content creation and then the side of brand management and um, pretty big time user acquisition or direct response advertising. And so that's ultimately the the blending of those two worlds is kind of how we came about um, starting Fungi was um, this, this idea that we can create really innovative content um, that can define a new genre of game but be incredibly brand forward and thoughtful in terms of how do we effectively market the product so that we can have enough traction so that there's a, a financial and business case to keep on running the game. How do you describe that genre that you're defining? It's tough, you know, like we've, we've had those conversations with a lot of our big platform partners and they look at us and they're like, we get it. Like you guys are an indie, you're 12 people, yeah. you know, you have 12, you're approaching 12 million downloads in less than two years, you're four and a half stars in, you know, like in most of the geos that you're distributed in. Um, and they're, they, they look at us and they're like, yeah, you don't really have a competitor. It's, it's tough to define because you've, you're out to try to create these brand new experiences using tried and true game mechanics. Um, so, um, you know, I think the way we talk about the game is it's a, home renovation simulation game but in the end you know it's actually a role-playing game there's a lot of rpg um, mechanics built into house flip um but it's not the traditional rpg in that there aren't like wizards and and knights right. fighting a, a dragon rather it's home renovators you know basically people that play the game they're specializing in carpentry or landscaping or they're an interior design expert and then instead of fighting that dragon per se um they're fighting like a, a tutor house right. or a craftsman <laughs> that that they're trying to didn't renovate. you say also like 75 percent of the players are women yeah you know like we don't target our our player base in terms, terms of advertising it's just that um, we have a very good understanding of our demographic and we've delivered a game that resonates incredibly well with 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 women. But that wasn't was that the intent going in or just how it turned out? Was it the intent? It was insofar as we knew that it would resonate well with women. Um, did we design the game so it was girly? Absolutely not. You know, like we we understand that the, the game market, especially mobile games, it's one of the most competitive industries you could potentially get into at this in this day and age you know so um you know us approaching the product development understanding who our demographic is likely to be we certainly took design cues to say hey like we know that this needs to be accessible to an audience that's not normally accustomed to playing an mmo or an rpg right and so um, you know, Jimmy's background is largely UI UX. And so it, he ended up being a great natural fit for us at, at the company because it was to think like, how do we think through what's going to be a great user journey so that this hardcore or midcore game experience can be accessible to women that have never played like a Final yeah. Fantasy or a Witcher 3, you know? Type it's, it's amazing how the whole demographic shift has happened. I mean, gaming was such a male dominated, I mean, still is in some sectors. So I applaud you guys for really pushing the envelope in that and i hope part of your employee base is representative of the demographic that plays the game it's something that's um top of mind for us in tech in general mm -hmm. just the fact that how inclusiveness and diversity are so critical it's a great point you you bring um i think the video game industry is notorious for being male dominated not just from the player base but also from the the, the companies that are building these games um, and we're actually proud to say that we're almost 50 percent uh female as a company fantastic yes. so i'm gonna applaud you i'm gonna stop you and applaud you right there um hassan minaj is like one of my favorite comedians right now and he does that patriot act show and he had, I don't know if you've seen the one on the video game industry. I encourage you to watch it's on Netflix. And it's, it was like, wow, it's still pretty bad out there for the large sort of um, publishers. It's just a very tough business. And um, for anyone who's uh, coming up through the ranks as you guys are and sort of leading with 50% women in your company, I think that's a great start. Hope that continues. I think that's also indicative of just what's going on in mobile. I remember 10 years ago, we had some customers that were in the traditional game publishing space. I won't name them, but they were pretty much downplaying the whole mobile thing a decade ago. They were like, oh, we make so much money from like the consoles. And but mobile has really 
came even for the, like the Nintendos of the world are starting to embrace the mobile platform because of how important it is um, in terms of reaching. And it's, it's consoles that are somewhat struggling now, right? So a lot has changed in, in 10 years and you guys seem to be right on the cusp of taking advantage of the new paradigm. Probably like five years ago, everyone's saying, yeah, everyone's going to have a mobile, a smartphone in their, you know, in their pocket at, you know, in some capacity. Uh, the crazy part is it's still growing. And, you know, I think, um, I think a lot of folks now looking at mobile um, now recognize that the game consumption, media consumption in general, I mean, there's so much type of media you can consume on a mobile device, whether it's YouTube videos, if you're reading an if you're reading an ebook, you're listening to an audio book, you're playing a game, um, you're just reading a blog or a new you know news. It's just one of those personal devices, and um, game content is just one of those things that's going to be around for quite some time, you know. Um, and and that's kind of our long view of how we how we build our game. So House Flip is is our first game, and we're incredibly proud of it. Um, but um, we also recognize that the game's not even two years old in in the wild you know it's it's very very new um whereas you compare to like an ea that has like the sims that game's been around what 25 30 years a uh, really long time right and um and and it's a recognizable brand it's a brand that people have a great deal of heart share when they think about the sims you know there's obviously nostalgia but even you know to their credit the quality of the games that they publish on on mobiles still top notch right our business side of things we feel that even though we're designing we're publishing games we're ultimately trying to build really long lasting brands like we think that house flip is the type of game that people will play five years from now 10 years from now maybe like the sims 25 30 years from now what must also be helping you is you know i could geek up geek, geek out about this forever but um is android becoming a better platform for gaming than it has ever been before it used to just kind of not be very good. I remember being a Google person working on that ecosystem, being, you know, having an allegiance to that platform. I've noticed that just all apps, but especially games, like they're actually really good on Android. Now it gives you globally much broader reach as far as quality of play, right? That's a great point. You know, I think the expectation from consumers around the world is extremely high um you know production quality across the board whether it's ios or android people expect like hey if i'm going to download something it better be damn good if i'm going to invest time and money into the thing you know and you're absolutely right yeah we we're we're incredibly proud to be part of this start on android platform with with google um you know we use gcp as a as a core platform and and um and run our, our game on Google App Engine. So, you know, I, I think um, Android as a as a platform, they've they really like what we do. They recognize that we're a small team. They recognize we're what people would call an indie game studio and um, and they've they've supported us as much as they can. And to be to your point, actually, um, they actually have a, a very robust developer set um, of tools yeah. um, to kind of figure figure things out. So even really small companies or a one person designer um, can can push out a product and have a, a good deal of tools at their fingertips. And look, market penetration globally on Android, I think the big trend now is not no longer these flagship devices that are $1,000. People want like a $300 device or $400 device that works and that generally means Android globally. And for you guys who, who really do, you know, push content globally, I think that's important for it to work wonderfully on a $300 device, right? And I think that's... Uh, maybe part of the reach. So before we dive more deeply into GCP, because I'd love to, let's talk about how, you know, Jimmy came into the fold. You, uh, you know, very proudly introduced me to him when you first walked into the office as my employee number one. And, um, and uh, I see you guys have a fantastic relationship as well. I can just tell by your dynamic, but let's talk about how that came about. Where'd you find Jimmy? Jimmy, where'd you come from? Yeah, so, you know, I met Alfred when I was still at UCLA. So I've known him for almost almost a decade now. It's been a quite a long time. And prior to joining Fungi, I was a product manager at an e-commerce company. So my background wasn't in games. I was very much on kind of the tech side for web and mobile, but hadn't ever gone into mobile games. And to be frank, I hadn't played many mobile games at the time. You know, I was at a point in my career where I was deciding, you know, what what can I do? What what risks can I take? while I'm still young and, you know, what type of impact can I have at a different type of company at the time, you know, Alfred was starting up Fungi. I think they were just in the early prototyping phases. And so I think that it was an incredible opportunity because it was 
at the beginning where I could still have a big impact, but you know, I I really felt like the opportunity where we were targeting kind of more casual gamers um, was a great one to kind of take on. And so I joined um, a little less than four years now, but um, when we kind of just talked over beers and food and we're like, hey, like maybe this is a good fit, let's check it out and you know see what happens. So. You know, we've been working together over the last four years. It's been awesome. Well, the results are there. I mean, $12 million is nothing to scoff and sneeze at and four and a half stars. We all know how important that is, right? As far as relevancy and ranking and searchability and discoverability for the game. And I'm sure you guys have um, some plans. Is, is there anything you're able to talk about as far as roadmap? Yeah, definitely. I think for us over the next six months to a year is really about focusing on social and multiplayer. And I think, you know, House Flip has done a great job in bringing together this world where it's very immersive and the experience is great for our players, but they haven't really had the opportunities to interact with each other and to play together. And so a big focus for us is going to be bringing our players together. And we're super excited about kind of building out these feature sets. Um, And I think it will drive not only engagement between our players, but bring other players in to say, hey, like, I'm playing this game. Communities. Yeah, communities. communities yeah. Creating these clans and these um, different types of guilds and whatever it is. It's like, hey, I'm a carpenter. You know, I need a painter on my team. Come join, you know, download this game, come play. And yeah. so that's kind of the goal over the next six months. We almost take it for granted being technologists, but the fact that we're in this realm Far different than when you and I graduated, you know, business school or or, or um, when you got your ma- you know masters, is what what big data means then versus what it means now. How technology creates an environment where there is very little barriers to entry, and the fact that you can simply focus on developing the game, and whether it's ten ten downloads or ten million over a weekend or a day or whatever doesn't really matter exactly isn't that crazy it's crazy yeah I mean, it's almost science fiction like if we think about it stop and pause and think about it and the fact that you can have the same caliber the same performance the same functionality the same apis available to you as the biggest game publishers in the world to me that's truly the democratization of access to technology. You're absolutely right. I think in terms of the low barriers of entry and you think about like like a business school type of a um like a fundamental principles like a Porter's five forces, right? That's yeah. kind of probably what you're thinking about, right? You know, I I think um we think about the the um barriers of entry and and kind of um the constraints of against other suppliers, other people that are creating content, right? Um, you know, it's it's easy to kind of get access to those APIs and create all that content it's a lot it's actually incredibly difficult on the discoverability piece why why publishing is such a big part of the the barrier of entry and why it's actually one of our core competencies as a company the fact that there's not just platforms like a gcp but there's software platforms like an unreal or like a unity that makes these tools incredibly accessible to um, to talent and quite frankly the universities are teaching with mm-hmm. those tools they're starting um, yeah, they're leading yeah. with them yeah you know like we we hire a bunch of you know master's degrees engineers from USC and they you know they studied game design and and computer science um you know I think it's not just it being available and the democratization of technology but um, the ease of access also makes it so that being able to ramp up a product um, in a sophisticated way, um, is a lot more accessible for, for folks that have like a very specific vision. So, um, you know, that's not to say, you know, like there's plenty of apps that get pushed out there, but, um, you're right. There are a lot of other variables that go into, you know, whether or not those apps see the light of success. And that's, what's going to be the determinant of success or failure. It's not going to be the access to technology. It's not going to be the affordability of the technology because you can actually, it's cloud, it's consumption based. You can do lots of testing, right? Before you, um, scale and if you're scaling and if your game is designed right, if your consumption goes up, that's a good thing because it means revenue is going up as well. And again, I think that's the stark difference between now and a decade ago or even five years ago around um, how um, the smallest really, really 
smart and motivated teams can go and compete with the biggest game publishers because the technology makes it possible. That's not a barrier. Oh, we can't afford this thing. We can't do this data center thing, or we can't afford the CapEx related to that, or we can't access these. Oh, they have the secret sauce set of APIs that I can't also access. No, it's like, it's there. It's there. Yeah. yeah. Like Google, like we'll sell it to anyone. <laughs> so you can buy it as much as Activision or EA or anybody else. You know, you guys had uh, platform choices. You guys started from scratch and you could have picked anything. You could have built on anything. You could have standardized on any platform, etc. from a cloud standpoint. Uh, what are the set of things that led you to, to lead with uh, GCP? Yeah, you know, I think with GCP, they have tons of great things that really make them awesome. I think for us, there was basically four categories that was really important to us. So the four categories are performance, costs, range of products, and ultimately ease of management. And so, you know, on the performance side, we know like Google is awesome, right? So whether it's latency, whether it's how strong the instances are, all of these things are incredibly important to us. And for us as a um, a game company that's around the world, that's super important because we want the same high quality experience in the US, in Japan, in Korea, wherever it is. I think ultimately Google's performance is you know, what allows us to do those things. And it's a differentiator. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's kind of on the performance side. On the cost side, you know, as a small company, cost is super important. Like every dollar that we can save on our infrastructure and our server, we can put that money back into marketing, drive more players, drive more downloads, all those things. And for us, I think, you know, the ability to automatically scale our instances makes it so that when we get a feature or we get a tons of downloads, it just happens, right? But if traffic suddenly dies down a little bit on like a holiday or like overnight, it does it for us. Um, and I think the second point with costs is working with SADA, you guys have been great too, because before, you know, Joining with you guys, we had a plan with Google Cloud to have support, but with you guys, it's awesome because we're able to not only save on those costs, but we're able to have the same type of support that we'll get, you know, and that's been, I think, really great for us. Our intention is to be better than Google. Yes. <laughs> and I think, you know, what... what Even the, better than Google. Right. Which and is I, a high bar, but right. I think that's part of the value that we bring, that what, why Google needs partners and why I think uh, clients like to engage especially in local markets. Sometimes, you know, you want, you want to be there face-to-face, uh, -face, but um, that's, that's the role that we play. I think as, as, as important as you guys are to Google, you're more important to us at SADA. So I think us being that um, sort of con concierge of that relationship and that platform is great. Even though, of, of course, you guys have exceptionally talented technical people and engineers, hopefully that it's also uh, comforting to know that we have GCP experts here that you can lean on. Uh, in case you do want to optimize or there is a support issue or you have an architectural question you want to run by our new CTO, Miles Ward, or somebody else that comes from that world, you know, we can help you get the most out of the platform over time. And, and I think that's a great point because when we first switched with you guys, you know, there's GCP has so many products and it's hard to know what is, what is the right one for us, right? And I think um, Seth from Sada was great in terms of saying, hey, like these are the things that you should take a look at. These are the things you're trying to build. Um, take a look at them and, and we can help you integrate them and we can help you define like what is it that you may need in the coming months. Is it like, yeah, big table, big query, right. spanner, is yeah. it a Firebase? Is Firestore, like, real <laughs> database, yeah. I think Google does a good job of uh, providing the plethora of options, but I think that you can get very specific with what's right for you and your particular application or the component of your of your application. So architecturally, you know, we use a lot of products on GCP, but our servers run on Google App Engine. So that, that's been awesome. Um, we use BigQuery and Data Studios to be able to not only store our analytics, but be able to analyze it. And so we have a data analyst and she's great in terms of diving into the data. And we really believe in making data de driven decisions on kind of the, not only the game designs that we make, but just how we're going to build out our future features. Otherwise we use a lot of Firebase. And so we're really happy that Google Cloud 
you know, purchased Firebase over the last couple of years, and yeah. it's been really easy to integrate all of their. For you know, mobile, yeah. it seems to be like the panacea. Yeah, well, that's what we hear. It's great because we just integrated, you know, remote configurations and push notifications. Um, we use Crashlytics, and so it's been really easy being able to scale our features because there's so many products that are available to us. Yeah, and it's it's all for, for all mobile apps, not just games. I think Firebase is a, is a huge, huge win for Google and GCP and our customers. Uh, but Alfred, you come from this world of data. Like, how much do you love BigQuery? I'm not actually in the BigQuery myself anymore. Thankfully, we're, you know, the, the our data analyst, Sophie, yeah, has I been mean, awesome. I, I'm sure you're not You're saying in general, in oh, like we, cons- we, we love it. Like I mean, conceptually, like, oh, cons- based on where you came from sure, 10 years sure. ago, and how, oh, how oh, you had to right. analyze data, like, that's true. Like like back in the day, like running our own SQL queries, waiting for however long for a query to run, um, throwing it into Tableau, like that was that was painful. It was painful and like, expensive and, and and expensive. Oh, for sure. From a ten thousand foot level, BigQuery is 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 awesome. We're we're really happy with it. I think um, Jimmy doesn't even know what it was like. You know, like eight years ago, how bad it, it was looking at that type of data, um, and. Um, it's a new generation, you know, like our, our, you know, our data analysts, like this is just part of what she, wh- how she was educated. I just remember like data warehousing yeah. and like tens of thousands of dollars just to Cognos warehouse. Yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, like, you know, um, business objects, any mm-hmm. sort of tool, like data cubes, like that. It was such an onerous yes. task just to Jimmy. You missed this whole, you know, you missed, <laughs> you missed the glory days. Yeah. Now uh, they were they were very. And again, that was a time when big data analytics were for the enterprise only. That's right. And the fact that we have now entered, I think, largely due to what Google's pushing into the marketplace, like this evening of that playing field. Like anybody with the right training and tools, etc can do the same level of data analysis and create insights in a completely democratized fashion. It used to cost so much money just to get just to get started. If a customer is completely not on Google at all in the enterprise, let's say, if they're using anything from Google Cloud, it's generally BigQuery, it's to analyze your ads data. Yeah, I think BigQuery is great, not only in terms of looking at what we're going to be doing, but you know, it's also our source of being able to help our current player base, people who reach out and say, hey, like I'm having some issues, you know, we store all of their events and all their data and we can easily look back and say, hey, this is what happened. We can diagnose problems. We can say, oh, this really is, you know, a issue that's happening with a lot of players and we're able to be proactive about fixing things and making the experience just better. I think you also now have the foundation and as you get more, more, more people on staff and you're able to kind of allocate these kind of specific roles. I, I can only imagine what you will be able to do from a predictive analytics standpoint. Like if this is the pattern that we predict this player will play for three years and this player will play for six months, how do we get them to, you know, I think that's really exciting. And again, just that ability to store and process the level of data with BigQuery is, is, uh, is, is just a, it's just amazing that anybody can do it regardless of size. Honestly, it's, Jimmy doesn't appreciate it. He wasn't around when it was hard. <laughs> he thinks it was always like this. Any major plans on, you know, what can you talk about the next game? Oh, wow. That's a that's a big question. Provocative question? It's it's a provocative question. Um, what we can say is that we're not making another renovation game. Um, we've created something that is um, kind of follows the rubric of success that we've had with Housefoot. Um, we want to create something that will define a genre which means that it's a game that doesn't exist today. Nice. Um, That's exciting. That's hard to do. How do you create a game that doesn't exist today? It's hard and it's easy, actually. Really? It's hard because there's some creativity involved, right? It's easy because there's so many good game ideas out there. Mm. You know, like it's... It, when people think about like the history of, of mobile games, we're in year, what, nine, ten? Sure. Like this is going to be going on for the The iPhone 15. came out in 2007. And App Store didn't go out, go live until 2009. Imagine 50 years from now what people will be talking about. Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, I'd say a number of things. You know, I, I, I consume a lot of content. I probably play mobile games more than anyone in the company. But for you, it's work. 
Uh, no, I, I, it, that's no, what he plays whether or not. I play research. whether or not. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sitting there answering emails and playing games as I'm you know like between thought you know like I'm always on my device. I probably show like 15 hours of consumption per day, bringing the uh, you know conversation full circle. Um, it, we're trying to follow you know a there's a ton of opportunities in games. Um, I think there's a lot of good ideas out there. Um, the the great difficulty is proper execution and being able to execute it in such a way that it's broad appealing and you're delivering the mechanics in such a way that you have players that want to stick around for, you know, 90 days, 180 days, 365 days, five years. You know, I think that's ultimately the, the, the end game. And so, um, you know, what I can say about our other game designs, um, the, the second of which we prototyped in multiplayer competitive mid core game that will do really well with women. And so, um, you know, just given that we have a, so many downloads, so many of our near 12 million downloads of House Flip have been largely female, um, it would be, it, it just makes sense for us to um, continue making games for that demographic, you know? And so show me another competitive multiplayer real-time game that is accessible to women. It just doesn't exist and so um so you know our focus is um to innovate create something that can define a, a, a genre and um allow us to kind of rinse and repeat the same type of success that we had with house flip you know and considering we only spent maybe three weeks building the prototype um you know the amount of time that i spent designing the game um, was actually about the same amount of time it took in writing the the game design for House Flip. Wow. So, um, but House Flip's game design document is maybe like 13 pages, and our second game's design is like 32 pages. And when I finished it, it was just like, I woke up in a cold sweat about a year ago, and I was like, I need to like write all these things down. And then... Um, and then I put it on the shelf and I didn't want to like be like, I just, because we're, Cause you know, we're, focusing we're focused on house, house flip. Of That's course. where yeah. our revenues Focus come in. Focus is very important. Absolutely. You know, and, and then um, the story behind it is um, or just before Christmas, um, we knew that product team was going home, QA is going home, marketing is going home. And I found myself, it was me and three engineers. And I was like, hey, I've got this game design that I, you know, like, put on the shelf you guys you know like you're not working on production let's let's maybe you know pump out a, a quick prototype so i showed you know the the gdd the game design doc to, to jimmy and his um his pm derek and um and i was like what do you think you know like shit all over it if you if you want you know like tell me what you think and i think when they finished reading the gdd they looked at me and they're like this is a much bigger game than house flip and we need to make this, you know? Wow. So That's I think fantastic. I became, you know, even more motivated because there's a substantial buy-in from our, our internal game designers. Yeah. And, um, and then that gets me excited because I'm like, I'm not crazy that it's, <laughs> you know, like that I just wrote this crazy game idea and I've got guys that have been, you know, spending way more time in thought, you know, the, the thoughtfulness that they put into our game designs and house flip, they spend a lot of time like thinking through all of the edge cases, all of the, you know, obviously the critical mass cases, but, um, you know, the fact that they read the GDD for our second game and they're like, holy smokes, like this could be, again, a new genre of game. Like we have to make this. So it's so the problem is that it's going to cost a few million to build it. And, you know, like it's tough as a small company um, to, you know, just survive against some of these big time competitors, you know, with, we're, you know, the, the likes of an EA or a Glue or a Playrix, these are all multi-billion dollar market cap companies. And yeah. we're just, a 12 person team well look there's there's a reason that their their mo tends to be you know acquisition and all of that like the creativity that's going to come out of the small team and the speed to execution and the fact that yes engineering and people and talent is really important and that's competitive but nowhere in the history of time and you said it earlier are we more in charge of our own destiny like it's all execution it's all on you alfred and jimmy there's no other, like, you know, you can do, you can actually execute it and you can go raise money if that's what it takes or whatever. Uh, there's lots in the silence in LA is very vibrant now with, um, with, with the, uh, capital markets in general for, for startups and, and, and also later stage companies. And so it's all on you. Like there's no, there's no barriers. There's no real hardcore barriers as it used to be in the past. And I, and I love that. And I think that's the case in a lot of industries 
but for for you guys especially in this you have you have something special in the team that you've created in this new genre defining you know type of entity you've created and so that must feel great that it's all in your hands it does feel good yeah. you know i remember when we first launched um house flip and we're just seeing like tens of thousands of downloads come in like per day and i think jimmy and i were at a conference in san francisco and and um you know and we just started seeing these reviews and we're like i think um like obviously we're super proud we're like we have like 2000 reviews and we're 4.6 stars like we're like super proud of it um you know we're to over 200,000 reviews now at 4.6 stars you know over 100 I think over 110,000 reviews in the US alone and I remember Jimmy looking at me and 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 saying like dude like we don't play this type of game like on the regular um but we've created this great content that a ton of people are really just enjoying and consuming. And I think the number one word association in our reviews to this day is still the word love. And that's that's incredibly meaningful, you know, like that we're in the um, content creation space and the people that touch our content, um, they care about it. Whatever experience you've gained from um, House Flip, you know, being uh, conveyed and, 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 and benefiting the next uh, title that you guys launch, I think that's a great sort of snowball effect. And I'm super proud to have you guys as a client of ours. And I'm, I'm so uh, thrilled that you've chosen Google Cloud as the as a platform to build on. And I just want to let you know that we'll be here for you. Google Cloud will be here for you. Um, technology is great when it kind of goes into the background, right? That's when it's best, it's most effective. So you guys can execute on the business and the game design and the marketing and, and the engineering and then the rest becomes uh, a non-issue and that's really our job to help provide you guys that level of support for years to come and um, i'm really proud to be supporting you guys and thank you for telling your story on cloud and clear i think this is going to be a great episode thank you tony yeah thanks yeah, tony it's great being here yeah. thanks jimmy appreciate nice it to meet you yeah. in person yeah. well, congrats thank you again. really happy for you guys yeah. that's awesome man Thank you for listening to Cloud and Clear. Check the show notes for links to this week's topics. And don't forget to connect with us on Twitter at Cloud and Clear and our website, sada.com. Be sure to rate and review the show on your favorite podcast app.